Hello again everyone. This time I will show you how to edit vehicle stats like nitrous duration, jump height and more. If you haven't watched the first tutorial on how to set things up, check that out first. I will be using the corner serpent as example for this video. Open your unpack folder and navigate to this path. You will find its EE file here. Copy the file and paste it in the folder with unknown tools. Now drag the EE file onto small unpack.exe. The archive will now be unpacked to a folder called its name and .ee underscore unpack at the end. For convenience later on, always remove the .ee underscore unpack at the end. Now go into the unpacked vehicle folder and you can see more folders as well as an add files.xml file. But leave this alone for now. It will only be useful once we get into cloning vehicles and adding files. Follow the path on screen and you will see two more folders. Go into the one called default. You can now see all of the vehicle's stat files. The generated folder also has a few stat files, but we'll focus on the ones in default for this one. Some vehicles also have stat files in the 00 general modules folder, but not this one. But before I go about editing anything, let's first check if one of these files was patched in one of the game's updates. Go back to the folder in your unpack where you got the EE from. Next to the EE files, you will see another folder called modules. Go into it and then default. Here you can see two files, the land engine and the global file. These two files being here outside the vehicle file means that they were updated in one of the game's updates. You will have to edit these and not the ones in the EE, since the ones in the EE are not used anymore. But let's ignore that for now and focus on the others. Return to the unpacked vehicle file and open another window with names tools next to this one. Now drag the vehicle misc file onto badge.exe. You will now get an unpacked xml file. Open it with Notepad++ and scroll down to where it says, here you can touch. Let's change full nitro refill time to 0.3 full nitro use time to 20, full nitro use time upgraded to 50, turbo jump cooldown to 0.5 and turbo jump cooldown upgraded to 0.3. Now let's save the file by pressing Ctrl and S. Minimize the notepad window and drag your edited XML onto badge.exe again. This will repack the file. Now go back to the root of unknown's tools folder. Drag the unpacked vehicle folder onto smallpack.exe. The file is now repacked and ready to be tested out. Copy the file and go to your drop zone folder, either multiplayer or single player, and create the same path as where you got the EE from in your unpack, so this one. Now paste the vehicle file here. Now start up the game and spawn in the car. It should now have longer nitro use time, and turbo jump and nitros should refill faster. Congrats, you just made your first mod. But now let's say we want to edit the engine file. This one did get patched and can be found in the modules folder next to the EE in your unpack. In your unpack, go to modules, default and copy the engine file and return to your drop zone. Here, create a modules folder followed by a default folder, just like the one in the unpack. Now paste the file. You can edit it just like you would in the EE, but you only need to repack this file, not the entire EE file. And finally, let's get into hex editing. You will need hex editing for files that cannot be repacked, or when repacked crash the game, but don't worry, it's not hard, it just takes a bit more time. So let's say you want to move a vehicle's wheels, you do that in the land global file. First, let's check out if it was patched, and yep it was. So first copy it into your drop zone, then convert it to an XML. Just converting it to XML is fine. You can look at it just like this. However, repacking it is guaranteed to crash the game. Scrolling down, we can see four paragraphs that each have three values. The first one controls how much left or right something is. The middle one is for height and the last one is backwards and forward. Negative values for left and right means that the object will move to the left positive ones to the right. 
Negative values for forward and backwards means the object will move to the front. Positive ones move them back. Keep this in mind as this will be used a lot later on. But back to the file. Say you want to make the two front wheels be in the same position in the middle of the car, like this. Now that we know that negative value is for forward and backwards, so the last value means that the object is on the front, we can make out that the first two paragraphs are responsible for the placement of the front wheels. We want to change the first value that controls left or right to zero. In front of the value you can see offset in file, and this is exactly what we are after. So the first value in line 72, it is this. So let's open this land global file in a hex editor. On the left, you can see hex values for the lines. In case you've never worked with the hexadecimal system, instead of counting from 1 to 9, then 10, and then continuing with 11, here you count from 1 to 9, then comes the letters A to F, then you continue with 10. So let's find this line, which is here. The 0 after the E means that the value starts at the left, so put your cursor here, now hit Ctrl R to bring up the replace menu. At the top, change to floating point number. In search, enter the value we want to replace, so this one. However, change the dot to a comma. Now in replace with, just put 0 and hit enter. The value is now replaced, and unsafe changes are colored in red, but this was only one of the two wheels. The left or right value for the other wheel is located here. So again put your cursor in front, hit Ctrl R, enter the value to replace, so this one, change the dot to a comma, and replace with zero. Finally, let's save the file. So hit Ctrl S. Your changes aren't colored in red anymore, which means they were saved. In the folder next to the file you just edited, you can now see a .bag file. This is a backup file and is the version before your last save. But let's start the game. And here we go, the wheels are now centered in the middle. Mind that for some values, you will need to change to hex values instead of floating point number. But these are mostly things like unlimited ammo, yes or no. And before you end, a quick thing. To mod and install DLC mods, first get potatoes, drop zone folders and install help, and put the drop zones next to your normal or multiplayer one. Now go to your unpack, then as example, go into Macland Assault then the ARC folder. Here you can see a DLC folder. The DLC folder is where DLC paths start in your Mac Heist drop zone. Here is an example path for a Mac mod. The same applies to the other DLC and their folders. Once you put your DLC mods in place, run dlcpacker.exe where the game is not running. This will pack your mods into the files. Find that DLC mods always apply to both multiplayer and single player. Also mind that running one DLC packer will pack all DLC drop zones. You only need to run one, not all of them. To uninstall DLC mods, remove the files from your DLC drop zone and run the DLC packer again. You can now change any stats you want, can use a hex editor and learn about object placement. If you need any help with modding, you know where to find me. Join our Discord and either DM me or ask on the modding channel. And thanks for watching everyone.